Hi guys. Uh, so today, of course, we're continuing with the blues. <laughs> blues theory as close as you can make a theory of it. And uh, I'm going to be discussing the um, four dominant seven to one resolution, which sounds like this. All right, and uh, hold on to your hats because the more I took some, jotted down some quick notes about this, the more I realized I have hundreds of, literally hundreds of thoughts about the, this one four dominant seven chord. So uh, what is the four dominant seventh? What do we mean when we say that? Um, look at the top row here, the key of C. We have C, D minor, E, F, G, seven, A minor, and B diminished. The chords of the key of C. Now, if I go up four steps, one, two, three, four, this is my one chord, this is my two, this is my three, this is my four. Notice this is purely major, and if I were to extend a seventh onto this, it wouldn't become a dominant seventh chord, it would become an F major seven chord. Major sevens are anything but dominant. They have a very soft, kind of fluffy, cloudy sound, whereas a dominant seven has much more motion inside of it. All right, so um, that that is what four dominant seven uh, is referring to. And when we look at the key of C, we know we have a one, four, five, which for all intents and purposes, that G7 could also just be a G major, and that's fine. And well, a lot of early 60s songs were based on one, four, five, four. That's kind of like the good lovin', uh, twist and shout, a gazillion men, like millions of songs, one, four, five, four. It was a big thing back then. It's a real kind of partying sound. Um, all right. In any case, what the blues does, it turns one, which if you extended would be a major seven chord. Well, it says, no, we're going to turn this into a dominant seventh chord. And the same thing, as I mentioned with the F major, when we extend it, it becomes F major seven, but they make it F seven. So the three important chords of a 12 bar blues in the key of C would be C seven, F seven and G seven. And I use that phrase key of G lightly because really um, when we look at the, uh, the blues, we're actually in multiple keys at any different moment. Not only that, but again, this is part of my whole rant about this idea of key. The whole concept of key was ruined by the major minor key system because in the Greek modes, there is no such thing as a major scale or a minor, uh, a major key or a minor key because um, the root of, of, uh, of what you're dealing with isn't determined until you make that root. So if I'm in the key of C and I root on this D minor chord, well, then it's a D minor situation, not the key of D minor. It's actually the key of C if I'm using chords from within the key of C. That's a whole other story. I talked about this in the Greek modes. And here, you know, now that you have some background in the Greek modes and background in the um, major minor key system. We could start through those lenses looking at the blues. However, at the bottom line, those lenses are not quite proper and correct. And I have a very strong feeling that the, the theory behind the blues is not along the linear lines of music theory that, you know, say European harmony is. And there's some secret magic to this whole thing that I've yet to find out. If you follow me closely on this particular lecture, which, by the way, I may do in two parts because there's a ton of material. But um, if you follow me on this lecture, you'll see that there's all these little kind of odd little things that happen with the blues that you can't quite explain through the traditional theory we have. For example, in a standard blues progression C rooted, I won't say the key of C, but rooted in the C7 chord, there is no one scale that has a C7, an F7, and a G7 in it. Those are the three proprietary chords of a 12-bar blues progression. Um, and if you try to concoct a scale from those three chords by extracting the notes out, what you'd get is this awkward, well, I believe that uh, diatonic scales should never, ever have two adjacent half steps. Yes, you'll get some sort of a, a, you know exotic sound from it, which musicians are in love with getting exotic sounds. But from the natural nature's viewpoint, there is no such thing as a diatonic scale that contains two half steps right next to each other. 
okay? And that's the only way you'd be able to create a key that has C7, F7, and G7. It would be kind of a mess of notes close to the chromatic scale itself. And uh, the chromatic scale, I don't refer to as a scale, I call it the series, chromatic series, because it's the genetic pool from which we derive all of our scales and harmonies from. I don't consider it a scale proper. All right, so now where did the four seven to one cadence come from? Let's start with that. Now, some of you guys who are old enough may remember, well, first of all, just to start, uh, we're gonna be using the key of the root G for our blues. So we'll have the one is G7, the four is C7, and the five is D7. All right, now uh, that wasn't a really a standard 12 bar blues. I truncated it just to get all the chords in. All right, now where does this four to one cadence come in? First of all, it started out as a major cadence that's very ancient from church music which is a lot of old, if you're old enough, you'll remember that cadence is like church hymns will, uh, old tradition It's called the plagal cadence, the four to one cadence, as opposed to the five to one cadence. Right now, we have to picture history for a second. Again, we go back to the black slaves out there in the cotton fields. And by the way, there's a ton of noise in the alley, so pardon me for that. People are doing construction and motorcycles passing by. Uh, it's done on purpose just to annoy the hell out of me. All right, in any case, the plagal cadence. So uh, picture the black slaves out in the field, and um, they've never heard tempered harmony before. In fact, uh, most of the... Uh, Music of Africa is based on pentatonic scales, not diatonic scales. So they're hearing this something new with harmony that they never heard before. And um, there's a kind of yin-yang with the blues. There's the blues, but then there's gospel. And the two bounced off of each other. In fact, the gospel, uh, the churches, the black churches used to think blues is heretical because they were dealing with subjects having to do with sex and money and uh, alcohol and stuff like this, where... Uh, the gospel church was trying to stay pure and clean of that. So there was a little bit of a butting of heads between the two forms. Nowadays, they've been equivocated. And in fact, you'll hear gospel and blues within the same song. And it's all just a beautiful thing. All right. So anyway, the plagal cadence. So we, the, the uh, black folks start, you know, being indoctrinated into the white man's Christian religion, started their own churches. And if you know anything about black Baptist churches, if you're ever going to go to a church, that's the one to go to because it's a ton of fun. They're singing, dancing. It's just great. Um, but anyway, uh, they're trying to employ this plagal cadence, this amen. Now you take the other guys who are uh, working with blues and they, they uh, make guitars, like makeshift guitars out of uh, cigar boxes and this sort of thing, or maybe go out and buy one. And... Uh, they made a mistake with the plagal cadence in that they made them both dominant seventh chords, which is. All right. As opposed to the straight major chord. All right. Uh, so that is the, the blues uh, plagal cadence. All right. And um, yeah, it's, when you play those two chords, you could hear blues immediately. All right, uh, so I've discussed how uh, there is no key that contains the 1, 7, the 4, 7, and the 5, 7 all within. Um, only secondary. Okay, um, now when we were talking in the major minor key system about uh, secondary dominant chords, and you probably don't remember, but a secondary dominant chord is a seventh chord which will resolve to one of the chords in the key you're in. So let's just say like the chords of C, C, D minor, E minor, F, G7, A minor. G7 resolves to C, and that's the proprietary seventh chord from the key of C. But in the same way, 
G7 is to C, what A7 is to D minor, the second chord of C. And you can certainly hear that resolution. B7 resolves to E minor of the key of C. C7 resolves to F of the key of C. D7 resolves to G7 of the key of C. And E7 resolves to A minor of the key of C. Now, one little trick I came up with, I discovered it one day, was if you would take all the chords, and I mean all the chords this time of the key of, key of C, including that parenthetical diminished chord, if you take all the chords of the key of C, and I want you to look at the, um, not this top stuff here, just avoid that. Uh, what we have is uh, all the chords of the key of C now turned into dominant seventh chords. So instead of C, D minor, E minor, F, G7, A minor, B, uh, B diminished, we now get C7, D7, E7, F7, and so on. Now, if you, if you look on the chart, C7 will resolve to F, which is in the key of C. D7 will resolve to G, which is in the key of C. E7 resolves to A minor, which is in the key of C. Let's skip this for a second. G7 resolves to C, which, of course, is in the key of C. A7 resolves to D minor, which is in the key of C and B7 will resolve to E minor. When I say resolves to, I mean will resolve to. Um, and that's according to the major minor key system. Prior to that, they could only resolve to major chords. But now, uh, these chords can resolve to minors. Now, the one I skipped, F7 is the only chord uh, that will, uh, will not resolve to a chord in the key of C. F7 resolves to B flat major. That uh, chord stands out. So if I was in a C blues, F7 would be precisely that four dominant seven. So there is a blues clue right there. And this is what I mean by blues clues. There is something different that comes up that somehow connects to the blues. Why? I don't know, but it's pretty amazing when I go to analyze it. All right. Uh, now, here's another thing the four dominant seven does. We know that we could play a minor pentatonic scale against ostensibly major blues. Uh, G7, I've said this a million times, but uh, G major can function as G7. They can interchange. It's just that G7 has more color within it. All right, so um, the when I play G7, I play G minor pentatonic. All right, that note right there. is the B-flat note. Now, when we look at the three, we're going to deal with the key of G now. When we look at the three chords in the key of G in the root of G that resolve, uh, that uh, are used for the blues, we have G7, C7, and D7. Guess what? The four dominant seven is the only one that has that B-flat, that minor note. It's minor to G major. So there's another blues clue right there. The minor note that we play against G minor, G major is contained in the four dominant seven. It is not contained in the one. There is no B flat in the G seven chord and there is no B flat in the D seven chord. But indeed there is a B flat in the C seven chord, which points to the key of F oddly enough. And just to extend thinking really far, if I take the chord family of C, there are two major chords a whole step apart, F and G, right? Well, if I'm in the key of G and I play a C7, I get an F chord, F and G. Now, uh, according to the modes, the G would be the rooted chord. The F couldn't root, it's too weak. So that would be G mixolydian, which gives us a G7 chord. If you want to think about that for a minute, um, what, some of the guys that are more schooled in this sort of thing should consider that fact because it's interesting. Um, so the four dominant seven, uh, gives you the flatted third that we hear in the scale we play against the blues in G, uh, which would be the B flat note. Now I would like to demonstrate that, now this is going to be fun. I'm going to demonstrate the classical cadence, which is five, seven to one, uh, as opposed to the plagal cadence, which is four, seven to one, both in classical theory. Um, well, the plagal cadence in classical is not a dominant seven, but uh, four, seven, and one plagal cadence, as opposed to five, seven, and one. 
And I'm going to analyze, I'm going to break it down and analyze why does 4701 actually resolve? All right, so the answer to 5701 in the key of G major, D7. <laughs> Can hear the resolution D7 going to G. Now I've done this before in the major minor key system when I talked about tritone substitutions, but I will say this, every key has a chord that contains a tritone. Uh, now if we look on the upper section here, here's the key of C. F, G, A, B, that's a tritone. And what does tritone mean? It means three whole steps in a row. You will not find three whole steps in a row uh, anywhere else in this configuration except between F and B or B and F, okay? So a tritone simply means three whole steps. All right, now the G7 contains a tritone, uh, I mean the D7 contains a tritone in it in the, uh, in the key of G, that same little space where I showed you in the key of C, happens between the notes of F sharp and C. Very distinctive sound like the old European uh, sirens, police sirens. Now if I, it, uh, now what happens here is that this note is pulled to this note in the key of G. You can even hear the pull. Where this note is resolves down to the third of the chord, of, uh, of the uh, G chord. So this, from a D7, resolves to, and the G chord in this one, resolves to this. All right, so we have a really purely logical reason why the five dominant seven resolves to the one. But why the four dominant seven? All right, now, what I'm, for the purpose of just kind of a, uh, keeping you know it clean in your ears. I'm resolving to just a basic G major chord rather than a G7. It still works in the G7 context, but it's a little cleaner for your ears to hear this. Now, when I look at the tritone in the key of C, I mean in the C7 chord, as opposed to the D7 chord, I get this. And yes, if you're listening closely, you could detect some kind of re resolution. Well, I analyzed this years ago. I was a kid when I did this, but this B flat wants to go up a half step to the normal third of G. Right? This E note wants to go down a whole step to the D note of the G chord. So we get... Now, again, there is no scale or anything that, that accommodates this, okay? It's just a very strange thing that happens that's outside of the ballpark of European music theory. And this is one of the things that blows my mind. And there's a lot of mystery behind the blues. And this is why I always say I don't have a complete theory of the blues. I have these little hints of, like I'm showing you, the blues clues, these little things that show up that, that don't make logical sense in the in the linear fashion, but work, all right? So you can hear that resolution easy. All right, now, actually, I, I thought I was gonna make two videos from this, because it's, it's really, there's a lot of information, but it looks like I'm gonna get away with one. I'm already at the bottom of my list. Uh, we did the tritone analysis. Um, oh, when I'm done with this, I'm going to give you my totally sexist, politically incorrect view of seventh chords. You might like this. All right, but let's uh, let's look at it in terms of the modes. Oddly, the blues is somehow connected with the Mixolydian mode and the Dorian mode. Now, when we look at the Dorian mode, let's see if I have the. All right, let's take, we're back in C root here, I guess. So let's look at the C scale. Now, remember we have a four dominant seven in the blues. Well, if I root it in the Dorian here and I count up four, one, two, three, four, G7 from D would be the four dominant seven of Dorian, all right? 
so in that sense, it's related to Dorian in a way. Um, and in fact, the pentatonic scale we use uh, contains all the notes of Dorian except for the defining Dorian notes. I, I was through that before about pentatonics and modes, so I won't talk about it. Uh, why? And the reason why it's also connected, blues is also connected to Mixolydian is because the seventh chord itself states Mixolydian. In fact, it's the only chord you could simply isolate and say, this is a mode. Uh, if I can explain, uh, if I take a C major chord, I can't tell you whether that's Ionian, Lydian, or Mixolydian, all right? Because in the key of C, the C chord is Ionian. In the key of G, the C chord is Lydian. And in the key of F, the C chord is Mixolydian. Now, if that C was a C7 chord, then there's no avoiding it. It is C mixolydian. It's the only chord in the key that defines a mode as well as defines the key you're in. All right, so, um, but here's the real rub and here's the most fascinating thing to me is that the blues is the, if we put the modes aside and go to the major minor key system, the melodic, the key of G melodic minor, okay? The four chord is dominant seven as in the blues and so is the five chord. So that's the four, seven, five, seven of the blues. But the one chord is a minor chord. And here's the really weird thing is, well, you know, and this is melodic minor, one, four, five. Now, here's the wild thing is that, well, when I play the blues, I'm doing a minor scale, a G minor pentatonic. So it's kind of related to the melodic minor. The only difference being that the one chord is dominant seven in this case, but the scale is uh, playing minor. So in a way, you could say it's the most closely related to melodic minor. And uh, that's really it for for uh, four dominant seven, I might come up with some more ideas to throw at you with this one because it's a very, very cool little thing. Now I'm going to go, uh, this is dessert, okay? Uh, I'm going to talk about, now, when I get some students and I describe there are three chord types, major, minor, and dominant seventh, I always say major and minor are men and the dominant seventh is a woman. And then I start listing classic feminine traits. Women uh, tend to be attracted by sparkly things and they could be talking about one thing and as they see something sparkly and they look and go, Oh, a sparkly thing. Look at that sparkly thing. Um, ADD. All right. Seventh chords want to move. They want to go somewhere. Have you noticed that women, most of the women I've ever met in my life love to travel. Well, that's what seventh chords do. They travel, they try to travel to exotic places. Uh, women. All right. Now, when you, when you dress up a major or a minor chord, it's, there's a limit. You can only extend it. You can't really alter it that much. And alter it means taking notes that are outside of the scale you're in and, and using them. Um, it will throw off the, the meaning of the chord a little bit too much. Uh, let's see if I could give it, uh, let me see if I can think of an example. Um, Oh, uh, minor seven flat five, right? Uh, so I'm in G minor. Perfectly fine. But if I end with G minor seven flat five, you'll get a totally different effect. What? Right? So you can't alter. There I flatted the fifth. That's considered an alteration. A raised fourth, a flatted fifth, same note anyway. Sharp 11, same note anyway. Uh, those are all considered alterations. Sharp nine, flat nine are considered alterations. Now you can't sharp a nine on a major chord. It sounds ridiculous. Um, you can, but uh, it, it's functioning in a very kind of uh, temporal passerby way. It can't resolve, it can't relax. All right, you know, I can't do good loving exchanging. It just won't sound right. So you get my point. Uh, there's too much tension in the chord for it to relax. These are alterations. Well, guess what? The seventh chord loves to be altered. Now, when you think about women, not only do they dress up, but they add makeup and kind of prettify themselves. Uh, 
kind of give you the impression that there's something more than they actually are. All right. Um, uh, earrings, jewelry, all this stuff. These you could consider the baubles, bangles, and beads of alteration. Also, women. How many men will always say women are impossible to understand? They're so complicated. The seventh chord is by far the most complicated chord of, uh, of the three types, number one. And uh, all right, talk about dress up. Talk about dress up. Women love costume parties. They love to dress up. They love doing all this sort of thing, right? Well, the seventh chord, as you've seen through the three systems, takes on a different role in each of those systems. In the first system, it's only meant to resolve to the one chord. <laughs> In the second system, it could resolve to a minor chord. And in the third system, it can be a root chord. So this is all the kind of dress up that women do. Yes, seventh chords are the females of the harmony system. All right, so I guess that's it for today. I managed to keep this shorter than I expected to. Uh, I hope you get something out of this. This is kind of thinking stuff. and uh, But if you be very rewarded, if you start to make more and more investigations into this based on the principles, I believe that somewhere lurking out there in the subconscious mind of all of humanity, there is a theory for the blues. It may be nonlinear. It may have solely to do with only pentatonic scale. I don't know what it is. But... Uh, but it's out there and it's my I, I'm still searching. I, you know, I, I think about I learn something new every day by thinking about all this stuff. Obviously, I think about this. You'll get no music teacher in the world that will teach this kind of stuff. <laughs> OK, anyway. OK, so uh, enough, you know, bragging about my uniqueness. Still not getting laid. So what difference does it make? All right, you guys take care. Have a good one. And I'll see you next video around.